Hello everyone, this is Eric with the Fairbanks Library, part of the Harris County Public Library System. Today, in place of the computer classes I would usually teach here at the Fairbanks Library, I'm going to offer a short online lesson on how to code. This is an introductory lesson, very basic, good for those with no experience. We're going to do it using a free website called Codecademy, and in addition I'll attach a document to my social media postings and things that contain a list of other free online resources you can use to continue learning coding. We're going to start with a very basic hello world lesson so that you can see how to code. Then you can continue learning on your own using the website we're about to use or by using some of those other sites listed on the document I mentioned earlier. So first, just open your internet browser. I'm using Google Chrome, uh, but you can also use Microsoft Edge, Firefox, Safari. I'm going to go to the website Codecademy. Choose this first result here. We're going to need to make an account in order to use their site. So I'm just going to click sign up. And I will use a email I created just for this and make a simple password gives us the usual prompts here, so we'll get through this. All right, now we're into the website and it's going to offer you to try their premium service, but I'm just going to continue with the basic account. You can see that right here. And they also offer to give you custom recommendations. That just gives you a short quiz and then recommends languages or uh, again, advertises their paid service, but I'm just going to click that I want to explore on my own. Now we're actually in the site where you can see that they offer a variety of courses. There's a lot more than what's just on this page. These are just popular topics. I'm going to type Python 2 into this search bar and press the enter key. Here's their course on Python 2. One click will bring us to the syllabus for that course. Here's an overview. You can see a lot of other people have taken this course. 25 hours is how long it says it will take you to complete the entirety of the course, but it'll only take us a few minutes to get started. We'll click start here. And now we're actually going to be taken into the interface where we can create our program and run our program. On the left hand side, where it says learn, you see hello world and various instructions, including the tasks you have to complete to continue the lesson. In the center here, we have our word processor. It appears to be modeled uh, after Notepad++, which is a very popular piece of software to code in. So this is where we'll actually insert our code. And then when we run it, it'll get output here uh, to the shell. Uh, this would be similar to the command prompt that you would use on Windows 10. So let's begin. Here we have Hello World. This is the very first program that most anyone creates in any language, including other languages like Java, uh, JavaScript, C++. Hello World is the go-to starter program. So we just need to type this text, as it's seen right here, in our script print quotations hello world exclamation point you'll need to type it just as it's seen over here uh, because it's very picky about letting you continue it can only take in exact inputs we click run and you see our programs out here that's our very first program that's how coding works you create the code here in the word processor. This is our script. Uh, you would compile and run it, and it gets output here to this command prompt. Now at this point, you can continue learning on your own, but I'm going to go through a couple more of the lessons with you, just so that we can get farther in. Here it mentions the difference between Python 2 and Python 3. It says the most significant difference is the print statement. I would say that that's the most commonly known difference between the two, but not necessarily the most significant. So we're going to print another statement, hello world, but this time we need parentheses because we are using the syntax for 
Python 3. We click Run. Here is our output. That cleared our steps for the instructions. We can continue through, through the lesson. Now we're moving into strings. Strings are plain text, the sort of thing that you would output uh, to your code or your website where you can prompt the user to input new information uh, or just give them information about what's going on in the program. Our task now, try adding your name to the print statement with the plus operator so that this Python program prints hello plus your name. This is called concatenation. We will add plus here quotations, and my name is Eric. We'll run this, and you'll see that it puts them together. Hello, Eric. This is much more useful once you get into variables because you could say hello and have a name, a variable called name. You could ask the user for their name, and then you'd be able to output hello and then the user's name. Continuing on to step four. This is the first time we'll talk about what happens when you do something incorrectly. So if we go ahead and run this program as it is, it will warn us that we have an error, a syntax error. It's nice enough to point out where that error is. So the problem is on line one, our quotations don't match. You can see double quotes here and single quotes here. It points that out for us. So let's correct that by making both of these double quotes. We'll run again. We still have an error. This one's on line two, and it's because our second line contains no quotes. So once again, let's just add double quotes to both ends of this string, because strings always need to have quotation marks. We run again. How do you take, how do you make a hot dog stand? You take away its chair. Now the program is working perfectly. It clears our instructions down here. We've written two print statements and you can proceed with the lesson. We're going to create our first variable. Create a variable called today's date and assign a value that will represent today's date to that variable. So, our strings were in yellow because it's nice enough to color code things for us. This will just be in red. We're going to say today's date equals, and we're going to make a date. I will call it March 18th. And we will put this as a string. So we're going to store a string in our variable and run it. Now that's sufficient to clear our instructions, but I'm going to add a print statement here. Print today's date so that we can see that we actually did this properly. So we told it to print our variable. Our variable is the date, and you see that get output here. At this point, you can continue with the lesson. We're on step five of 14 for this first part, the very basics, just learning the syntax and everything. There are many other lessons on here, and as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to include a document for you to see other free resources. And if you're interested in the future, once our classes are available again here at the library, I teach at the Fairbanks Public Library, but uh, many libraries in the Harris County area also offer similar classes. Thank you for watching, and we hope to see you here at the library.